Greetings. Today we will study how the bullet time system is configured and calibrated. First of all, after we have assembled the installation, we check whether all the cameras really work for us and whether they are connected. We supply power. If all displays light up, then the cameras are working. The weakest point of our system is the USB wires. Therefore, we use only high-quality thick wires made of high-quality copper. Several USB hubs can be used in our system. The main rule is that you must not connect them in series. That is, we take one hub that connects to a laptop. And we connect all other hubs to it. If you make a chain of four hubs, then they will definitely not work. Chains of three hubs may or may not work. So it's better not to risk it. It is better to connect the hubs in the form of a tree. You must connect the central hub to external power. Because there are often situations when the power from the USB port is not enough. Next, we go to Windows Explorer and check the list of cameras. Now I have 11 cameras in the installation. I see that I have 11 cameras in the list. OK. Let's go to the settings. As we can see, we have 0 cameras saved in the system, and 11 cameras are connected. Accordingly, we can do nothing with them. First we need to save the settings. The cameras are now in random order. First of all, we need to sort the cameras. The fact is that the video frames will be glued exactly in the order in which they are located here. The easiest way to sort them is to turn on sorting, and then press the shutter button on each camera in the order. Let's do it. After that, we press that sort out button again, and save the settings. We now have the cameras in the correct order. Now I want to connect a trigger. I go to the trigger settings, select the trigger port and its type. I save the settings again. The system has determined that I have two Gentech triggers connected. I choose that I have six cameras connected to the first trigger, and five to the second. I save the settings. Now I can check if the trigger really works for me. To do this, I turn on the half press. The displays go out on all cameras, which means everything is fine, the trigger is working. When connecting cameras using a trigger, you have the second weak point of the system. This is the cable contact from the trigger. If the display on your camera does not turn off when you use half press, then you need to check the trigger connection. Often it is enough just to move the connector. Also in this tab we see the setting of the central camera, select the index value we need. Animation starts from this camera, and also this camera is used in video mode and video will be recorded on it. Again we save our settings. Further. After we have made sure that the whole system is working, we can proceed to the calibration. Before you calibrate the cameras, you must first align them so that they point directly at the calibration pole. It is advisable to use a plumb line to make sure that our diodes are located strictly vertically, that is, perpendicular to our installation. If your calibration pole is tilted, then you will have an additional rotation of the image, which will add distortion to the frame. Most use cheap kit lenses, they have one unpleasant feature. At a wide angle they have a fairly noticeable distortion, that is, image distortion at the edges of the frame. If we don't aim the cameras strictly at the pole, we will have a sufficiently large vertical or horizontal angle, then we will get image jitter at the edges of the frame. Different people use different camera alignment techniques. It is more convenient for someone to look in the program. For someone it is more convenient to look at the camera screen, someone looks through the viewfinder. When connecting cameras, the program blocks some options, for example, it is impossible to watch live view on the camera screen. Accordingly, in order for us to be able to do something with the camera, it is necessary to unlock the cameras. 
There is a button for this. After we have all done all the necessary manipulations with the cameras, we must reconnect to our cameras. After that, they will be blocked again. What is this blocking for? The fact is that it disables some functions on the camera that can lead to desynchronization during the picture. After we have aligned our cameras, we need to go through all the cameras and check if they are really target at the diodes and if they are really in focus. You can, for example, increase the zoom and move the image of our preview. If we turned off autofocus on the lens in most models, focus control from the program interface is lost. Therefore, I recommend leaving autofocus enabled on the lens and using software autofocus lock. That is, autofocus will work. It is always possible to start the autofocus of the camera itself. We can start autofocus from our program or manually control the focus. But during the shots, autofocus will be locked and it will not be able to bring down our calibration. After I checked all the cameras, making sure that they are really targeted at the diodes and that the focus is correctly set on it, I proceed directly to the calibration. I turn on our LEDs. I set up the search zones so that in all cameras the diodes are in these search zones. In general, it is ideal to position the LEDs so that the top one is the top third of the frame, and the bottom one is the bottom third of the frame. The more distance we have between the LEDs, the better the calibration will be. I lower the ISO, reduce the aperture, so that I have the diodes clearly visible, and everything around is darkened. The search algorithm is designed so that it searches for the center of a bright spot. Accordingly, we must darken the scene so that our diodes are clearly visible, and that no extraneous reflections interfere with the calibration. I'm going to calibrate. First of all, I reset the previous calibration. Next I take a picture. I'm waiting for the green indicator. The green indicator is on. This means that the frame was successfully processed. I can choose any camera and see if I really got diodes in the picture. After that, I click the check coordinates button. The system finds the center of the diodes. Everything is fine. I click calibrate. I take a shot in the preview. If the diodes hang at the same points, then the center of the frame is aligned, the calibration was successful. We can return the settings and see how the frame looks.
Rotation is smooth. Let's move on to branding. To make it easier for us to set up branding, we first take a shot of the scene. Some cameras have black bars because the image is shifted during calibration. The red frame indicates the area that will be included in the final video. First, I set up our cropping, that is, I choose how much I will be cropped from top, bottom, right, left. This cropping is necessary in order to highlight the part of the frame that we need to show. It also allows us to remove these black bars or cut off the part of the image that we do not need, for example, the edges of the banner. After I set up the padding, I set up the size the final video. I save the preset. There are quite a lot of additional options in the preset. We can increase the image contrast, saturation, make finer adjustments using curves. I want to create our video using artificial intelligence. Therefore, I will enable the use of artificial intelligence for all frames. It is recommended to enable this option only on sufficiently powerful computers. The fact is that this is a rather resource-intensive procedure. Here we see FPS for normal video and FPS for AI video. How many cameras will be in branding is affected by this parameter. We chose 10 FPS here and we have 111 real cameras. In the end we got 31 virtual cameras. I want to add graphics that I prepared in advance in the form of a sequence. I add an image layer. I save the preset again. After that, I select the first image of the sequence and change the type of our layer. Let it be so situated. I save the preset again. We have virtual cameras enabled, which means two sequences will simultaneously create. One to overlay on a regular video and another to overlay on a video processed by artificial intelligence. With the help of live view, I choose more suitable parameters. Be sure to turn off live view before taking a shot. I will take a shot using a regular clicker. The program has hotkeys PG up, PG down. Pressing one button activates the half press. Pressing the second button takes a picture. I'll try to take a picture. Almost perfect. We are waiting for the end of processing by artificial intelligence. After processing, the rotation became much smoother, including the smallest vibrations also disappeared. Let's take another shot. Now let's compare trigger sync and USB sync.
synchronization is great. Here you need to keep in mind that the fundamental difference between a trigger and USB is that the trigger simultaneously transmits a signal to all cameras. But the situation with USB is slightly different. Each camera is actually controlled by a separate client. And the more cameras we have, the more processor load you have, the more likely it is that out of sync will appear. Empirically, it was found that more or less good synchronization is obtained if the number of cameras is not more than the number of logical processes multiplied by 3, and the processor load is not more than 30 to 40 percent. Let's take another picture. It can be seen that the synchronization is a little worse. If you have 15 to 17 cameras, it's still better to use a trigger. Thanks for attention. I hope it became more clear to you how to work with the program.